With free next day delivery from Staples, you can run your business like a pro. You can guarantee the marketing department that they'll get their supplies tomorrow and guarantee the accounting department that they'll be delivered free. With free next day delivery, you'll have the ability to move deadlines up and adjust budgets down. Go to staples.com and get the office essentials you need delivered next day for free. Staples, it's pro time. Orders over $49.99, placed by 5 p.m. Excludes weekends and holidays. Eligible items only. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good morning, kids. I almost said it was Wednesday. I don't know what it is about doing this show. I swear to God, every time I come on air to do the show, I forget what day it is. Don't quote me on that one, but it happens, and I'm not sure if it's just a medication. Well, hi, kids. It's Thursday, and I woke up, and I'm sitting here. I'm eating my garlic bread, which I just finished, and had myself some cough medication and or cold medication, I should say. You know how you wake up and you feel like junk? If you follow me, you already know that everyone in my house has already been ill. So surprise, guess what? Now I have a sinus headache and I feel like garbage the day before that my kid has to be on television. Yay! Can't wait for that. So just want to remind folks of everybody because I know people have been so gracious and asking about what's going on with Kerwin. So bottom line, shortly since we're waiting for my guest today to come on air yet, um, I'll tell you about a little bit. Uh, everybody, we are going to Good Day Chicago down on Michigan Avenue tomorrow morning. Um, his call time is actually 9.15, so we'll be taping the segment right about that time. So somewhere between 8.45 and 9 o'clock we'll get there, and we'll find out specifically if they're going to tape it live and send me a link, if you're going to be able to watch live. I'm not 100% sure. She really hasn't given me a whole lot of details. I can just tell you that it's Good Day Chicago. I would watch my wall or watch my show pages just to check out and be able to see, you know, hopefully with any luck at all, we'll get an opportunity to be able to have everybody watch or at least archive watch it. It's a huge opportunity for him. I'm, I'm so proud, so excited, so elated that the reaction has been wonderful. He's getting offers for book signing, you know, in different locations all across the United States. The libraries are starting to show interest in having them. The hospitals want to house them. So to bring my son's dream to fruition is, is, uh, I don't even know what I can say about that, except I'm so damn proud of him, I can't even speak. So, um, again, I'll give you information about Good Day Chicago as soon as I get it tomorrow, somewhere around 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, and I'll post it up. Um, also want to remind everybody, in case you haven't picked up a copy of the River West Currents or Metro Parent Magazine, Little Kerwin's Face, along with the comic book, is uh, in print. So it's exciting that nothing has my name on it. It's all his little project. Hugely, hugely excited. This is a reminder to everybody also today is my last show of the week. Um, because I have to take him tomorrow, of course, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll be back on there next week, Tuesday. Two different indie filmmakers are coming on the show next week. Hugely excited about that. Um, not to mention um, not just indie film, but the other exciting news is I can't tell you because there's going to be a nice name coming next week from television that you'll probably recognize, but I can't say it. So without further ado, I do believe my guest has joined us. So let's click her on and get talking about her film, her projects, and her in general. Good morning, my dear. Hello. How are you? Oh, uh, well, I wish I could say I was better, actually, but I was just saying on Facebook, I'm eating garlic bread and I'm taking cold medication. Yay! And I have to be on air. So here we are. I'm very oh, no. excited. No, yeah, I, I feel like better. garbage. Oh, well, and I need to get oh, no. to feel better because, well, you saw my comment, right? I have to take my kiddo to the Chicago TV station tomorrow morning at the crack of dawn to Hi. take their segment. Hi. So... Yay, and I have to go buy a car today. Yay, so I'm just like, yes, I cannot wait to do this radio show with this chick. So really, I'm this is like the Aww. excitement of the day for me. It's all downhill, darling. So we have a lot to talk about, Aww. so we're just going to get to the to the to the gist of it. I'm going to bounce around a little okay. bit because I think it's important that folks know who you are before they decide to throw a million dollars your way. Yeah, that's right. I just said that. <laughs> well, I have 5,000 Facebook friends, so just give like two bucks a piece and we're good. Okay. So I found this fascinating because my kiddo found it fascinating. Your inspiration, as you have stated, meaning what led you to wanting to act with Dungeons and Dragons, and my kids are totally down for Dungeons and Dragons. They play it right now. Oh, so yeah. I found this an ironic yeah. twist. So talk to me a little bit about that. What made you? What's that all about? Oh God. Well, I was um, I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school, and I was very introverted. Um, I grew up an only child, and uh, I grew up very shy. Um, so when I was in Dungeons and Dragons and I created a character, it would allow me to be who I really wanted to be in real life. I mean, not a 200 year old elf, obviously, but, um, but I was a lot more, (laughs) I was a lot more outgoing. So I used it as a tool 
to kind of get myself out of my shell. Like whenever I met people, I would just pretend I was this character and it really helped me, um, you know, on, on a mental level. And then I sure. started taking acting classes because someone, or I joined drama club, you know, cause I, oh, a friend of mine in my D and D circle was in and said, you know, it'll also help you. So I did. And then I convinced my mom to let me take acting classes. And I did a couple of stuff when I was younger and um, mm-hmm. it wasn't really until I was in college that I that I started to do more and actually go on my own auditions and, you know, get headshots. And, you know, we, we didn't have digital back, I say back then. It really wasn't that long ago, right. but, but I still feel old. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, we had to do it the old-fashioned way with film and then go back in a week and pick out the proofs and then go back another week later and get the pictures and then get them printed. And it was a whole thing. So, uh yeah, it really kind of snowballed from there. I, and I just think it's so neat because I'm like, oh, my gosh, sure, my kids are playing this game. And I and it's rare nowadays. Like, you talk to adult people, and they're like, yeah, you remember Dungeons & Dragons. And half of them are like, what? What are you talking about? Because now we have a new age, new technology. So I thought that was way cool, and they like that, too. They're like, oh, my God, that's oh, awesome. No, I'm, still, so we, I'm still in it. Like, I still love d I I don't game anymore because I don't have the time to game anymore. But right. I still – you know, I used to in college, I used to still game. And if, if I had the time, if I weren't, you know, in the entertainment industry or, or what have you, and, and the hours are chaotic and you have to constantly be creating or you're forgotten about, but um, I would love to get back into to doing that again. But I do a couple of, uh, last year I did a LARP event and I'm hoping to do it again this year. So uh, oh, even when cool. I'm not acting, I'm, I'm doing something. Yeah. LARPing is like, people would say, why would you pay to LARP? Don't you get paid to act? I'm like, well, yeah, but I get, you know, when I LARP, I choose the characters I want to play. You know, when you're in this industry, especially as a woman, you're at the mercy of whatever there is, which is another, which is why I'm sure. creating my own project because I'm tired of the roles that are out there for women, and most women are, and that's why we're creating our own work. Right. I agree with you 150%. And there, and there are such minimal, and I don't want to minimize, but I mean, obviously, of course, it, it's a very large industry. There's a lot of players that are out there, and, and sometimes it's very difficult unless you distinguish yourself as a particular female, et cetera, to pick up certain roles, so to do certain things, which, of course, the advent to this lovely indie film thing that we have going on here. So I have a question yeah. relative to that. In your opinion, sure. I asked another actress this. Um, why do you feel it is that even today, even though there's there's such great talk about how women have made so many advances in all different areas of life, not just film necessarily, why do you think it is that that females are still the minority versus being the majority as it relates to being cast in film? I'm curious what your take on oh, that. Well, it's um, in relation to film and really in relation to life, just because we've made good strides doesn't mean that we're anywhere near where we need to be. Um, this has been, and you know, this is not meant to be disrespectful or rude in any way, but this has been a white man's world for centuries. Mm-hmm. And not only old habits die hard, the indoctrination is so ingrained, so ingrained that people's cognitive dissonance can't program it. They are so used to being able to do what they want and say what they want, that when you talk about why it's a problem, they get offended mm-hmm. that you're offended. They, right. like they're offended that you're, that you're standing up for yourself. Like uh, take Disney films. You know, there is, there's a video, well, there's a couple videos on YouTube about um, things you never noticed about Disney films. Like the mother's always gone. The woman is always sitting waiting for a prince to rescue her. All the strong women are the villains. And all the right. men are complaining, well, this has been fine for how long? And all of a sudden, everything is misogynistic. Well, we're only starting to talk about it now. And when fathers are, or guys are learned uh, or taught by their fathers who are taught by their fathers who are taught by their fathers and so on and so forth, that when we start to say something contrary to, to what they believe, um, it's a knee-jerk reaction. In addition, mm-hmm. there are so many women who are also programmed by it um, that, you know, they, they don't want to uh, rock the boat, so to speak. And even if people aren't programmed and they see it happening, it takes a really strong backbone to stand up against the majority because you know you're going to be mocked. You know you're going to be made fun of. If you're a guy, mm-hmm. you're going to be called a, 
you, you're going to be called a cuck or a beta. If you're a woman, you're going to be called a feminazi man hater who has that who has her period right now. You know, there's always oh, yeah. some way to gaslight people to make you like to bully you into silence and to bully you into submission. And there aren't very many uh, of us, men or women, that stand up against the majority. And that's why there are so few of us still in STEM jobs, still in film and TV that are uh, what they call above the line. I, I see what you mean. I gotcha. So if I were to ask you in a, in a fair question, some of the ones that maybe that you not necessarily pattern yourself after, but if you look at even Hollywood or even in, within indie film, are there just women that you respect or revere or admire in the industry that you say, you know what, that's, that's top bar right there. They're doing what needs to get done. They're doing the great projects and they're, and they're making a name for us females out there. Anyone in particular come up the top of your head? Oh gosh, there are so many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let me, let me think. There's um, uh, Jennifer, yeah, what's what's her name in um, the Hunger Games? Jennifer. Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, yes, she's she's okay. a she's a strong one. Um, the the woman who and I'm blanking on names right now because I'm thinking of people <laughs> that that are, that are singers. Um, she was uh, she was in election. She was married to Ryan Felipe. She she started the Ask oh. Her More campaign. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of who that is because I should know. Darn it! I, you know, I, and I can't yeah, remember the I, name. I don't know why. I don't know why. I have to Google it right now. I don't. Why am I blanking on names all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, Re- Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love uh, her. Okay. <laughs> because yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't know why I'm blanking on names. Probably because I'm thinking of. I was prepared to talk about characters from my project, so that's why I'm, I've got their names in my head. But oh no, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I wasn't prepared for this question, and shame on me because I should have been. But uh, everybody uh, has okay. something that they're standing up for, and Alicia Keys is doing the the no makeup thing, and I admire that they're doing all these things. Um, mm-hmm. But what I'm afraid of is is the opposite, like. Um, you know, ask her more doesn't mean don't ask about the dress. It just means don't ask a man how he prepares for his role and then ask the woman right. who she's wearing, give a twirl, and what did you do to get into your dress today? Like, those exactly. are things that I'm trying to bring attention to. And Alicia Keys with the no makeup is like, you should be allowed to wear makeup if you want to. It's just that if you don't want to, don't. If you do, do. You know, whatever. Um, I understand. So No, I get what you mean. For this, and it does take courage to walk outside as a woman without makeup because people ask you if you're sick, is there something wrong? But if you take too long to get ready, that's a problem too. <sighs> you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of screwed. Know. That's the bottom line. You know, no matter which way you go, that it's is, going to be your reaction. That is, that is it. That is the reaction is that we are just, um, if you eat only a salad, it's a women only eat a salad. But if you, so you have to eat the whole like meal but you're not allowed to gain weight from that, you know? So it's a constant right. being on microscope of, of society. And if you say you don't like one thing about a guy, all of a sudden you're the shallow one, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. That actually is a good segue to the next question I was going to ask you. To those folks that are – that are listening in, you are obviously not one thing. You're what I call my creative chameleon, which is you're in a, in a multitude of different things. And I noticed that one of the things you've done before, obviously, has been modeling in the past. And so this kind of yeah. stems right to the comment you just made, which is in society nowadays, most models, as we, I think society almost dictates what the model has to look like, meaning for some reason you all have to be like five foot 12, apparently. You have to be very tall. You have to fit within the requirements of the look and the feel. How do you stand on that? Because obviously you do this. I, I'm not sure you have time to do this modeling as much anymore but how do you stand on that meaning that um there are girls out there that might be looking towards hey this sounds exciting she went out and did modeling is it that exciting is it is it something that's just more tedious at times versus thrilling because of those requirements um well remember that society has been dictated okay sorry guys but society's rules have been dictated by men for centuries so Mm -hmm. we need to um we need to break the rule that we should exist for anyone's aesthetic pleasure. Um, ironically, in the 80s, women weighed more 
you know, you didn't have somebody who was 5'11 and 100 pounds like you do now. Sure. They were a little bit right. more healthy. And so I, I look towards the models of like Cindy Crawford, uh, Linda Evangelista, you know, the ones from the 80s and 90s that were a little bit more healthy looking. Um, but I don't do so much modeling anymore, and a lot of it has – has more to do with age than weight. I'm 35 and a woman over 30 in this industry is like, Ooh, spoiled milk, you know? So that's mm-hmm. another thing we're fighting against. Um, but a lot of my modeling and I have an hourglass figure. So I did a lot of lingerie and I did a lot of swimwear ah. and a lot of it was, uh, yeah, I didn't do very much runway. In fact, uh, like the beauty and hair shows, you know, it was more about the hair than, than your body type. So I did some runway, but not not very much. Most of it was catalog. Um, Got it. Okay, gotcha. Um, or or what they call um, uh, like industry, like print, like um, like a stereo ad, you know, like things like that. Ah, I got um, it. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So like catalog or like modeling, you know, like shoes or like um, you know, a scarf in in a like a knit magazine, like, so, so it was a little bit different modeling. I wasn't as mainstream as as the taller and and willowy type models are, but um, a lot of it is, a lot of it is be careful uh, because now with the internet, you know, you've got to take people somewhere or you've got to call when you get somewhere and let, let somebody know that somebody's looking out for you. Um, Right. You got to be wary. (laughs) Somebody is always trying to sleep with you. Somebody's always trying to say, um, oh you wanna God. you wanna have lunch and talk about something? Like why can't we talk on the phone? Why do we have to have lunch? Right. Like it's obvious you want right. to date, knock it off. Uh, right. <laughs> and, no, I um, know what you're talking about. Or or there's just people like being they'll come right out and say you don't have the right body type, you don't have the right look, um, you should get something done, blah blah blah. So you gotta have thick skin and oh just roll your eyes and go your opinion and walk away and because somebody will always always hire you for something. But when I did lingerie and swimwear, or not so much swimwear because bathing suits are, are part of our culture. It's not a big deal. But right. lingerie, and especially when I was in Playboy, like as a woman, if you do any any nudity at all, which first of all, why are we allowed to show men's chests and not women's? It's 2017. Mm-hmm. Let's get over it. All got nipples. Let's deal with it. Mm-hmm. But right. men can be nude. Men can be nude and they're brave and it's like, oh, wow, I can't believe you did that movie. That's so brave of you. But if a woman does nudity in any capacity, she's a whore and that's all she gets typecast as. Right, right. And that's another thing I understand. we need to change. Like, <laughs> men get to, you know, text their junk to whoever and nobody punishes them for anything. Even Anthony Weiner really right. wasn't punished that, that, to that. Right. To the oh, no, I know. Should have been. But a woman, should, like you see a woman's nipple and she's ostracized forever. It's like, come on, right. stop with the oppression I know. already. I know, right? And it's just, I, it just blows my mind away. I saw that, and I have to ask you about this because this is awesome because I have a whole other show relative to bikers. And I was like, oh, my God, she's on Fast Line Biker New Jersey. How the heck did that happen? Uh, I mean, are you involved in that? or Because um, that's awesome. That was a while ago. <laughs> that was like 10 years ago. Um yeah, I was on I was on the cover of Fast Lane Biker twice, once New Jersey and once Pennsylvania. And then I was the um what they call centerfold, uh which is the main model interview and such, um I think only once. Oh, okay, gotcha. In a while. <laughs> yeah, so Well, uh, yeah, I was cool. digging around and I saw it and I was like, Oh my god, how cool is that? She actually did a biker relative thing, which is awesome. And you look terrific. I, I mean, you're not that old obviously, period, in general. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, well, yeah, 35 is is not old, but for women, ah. it's really kind of a, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of yes. You were still fighting that, you know what I mean? We're still fighting. Yeah, I do know exactly what you mean. Stigma of of being like over 40 and what you don't have kids yet, and don't even get me started on that. The marriage <laughs> thing. Why aren't you married? Why haven't you found someone? Why are you still single? What's going on? And I'm like, oh my god, yeah, because I'm an old lady. I'm 47 years old. But you know, I, I embrace that. I'm like, you know what? 47 is now like the new 30, and 30 is like the old, you know, like later 20. I think we're all just kind of bumping up. It's it's all relative. You know what I mean? If you don't or act how you feel and you're confident, 
we're finally getting past that. We're finally getting right. over the age discrimination and women are coming out and doing other things. Like we're not just hiding into the shadows when we have, when we have kids or we're not just doing that right. or, you know, we're doing other things and we're going behind the camera and we're creating our own projects and we're doing our own work and we're finally standing up. Can I curse on the air? Is that okay? Hell yeah. Okay. I didn't, I, some, some, <laughs> Some radio you could say ass, like, no, you could say no, shit, you to whatever. No. Okay, well, Are you kidding? Well, the last, the last interview I did was like, just watch your language. And I'm like, okay. So we're finally Ooh, standing okay. up and going, fuck your rules. You know, fuck exactly. your stereotypes. Fuck your little gender box you want me to be in. And if you think I'm a feminazi and I hate you just because I'm standing my ground, then fuck you too. <laughs> How do you really feel about that? Holy man. But no, I get what you're you talking really about. you really want to that's know? That's insane. <laughs> Well, yes, that's I've why, had, you know, that's why I bring people on here. I'm like, why? You know, what's up with this? Why Why are things like this? How do you really feel about that? Because why hold back? Because clearly most of us women should be pissed off about this stuff, you know? We should be, and and there's more, if more women stood up and said stuff like that, then we, then we would have to say it less. And the truth is, exactly. it doesn't just hurt women. It hurts men, too. Because why do you have to be the aggressor? Why, what if a man doesn't want to be the alpha? What if he wants to be submissive to his wife in, in, their, mm-hmm. in the bedroom? Like, what if the woman earns all the money and he stays home and raises the kids? Why is this right. still a problem? Why does it hurt your right. self-esteem to have some other man stay at home? What does that do right. to you? How does it hurt you? It doesn't, so shut up. <laughs> exactly. I No, I agree with you. I think for a long time it's always been society dictates the woman is this role, the man is this role, and it's screwed up. You know, that's why I like seeing and promoting and helping anyone in any industry who's female-based or female-driven because it's important. I don't think uh, women get nearly as much as they need to in terms of promotion or accreditation or acknowledgement. It's just – it's sad. You know, it is. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to ask you a different gonna... question. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, no, it's Okay. We're going to turn just a little bit, a little bit in a different direction, obviously, because you and I are both writers, and so I wanted to ask a question. First of all, let's talk about the book review stuff, because I know you do book reviews on a pretty ongoing basis. Or at least, maybe I should backtrack. Are you still able to do that on an ongoing basis with the um, directing and acting, etc.? What's going on? I mean, are you still active with that part? I am. I used to be part of a um, a paranormal group that would do like one. A minimum of one to two books a week, uh, depending on wow. the size of the book. And okay. I had to not be an admin on that page anymore because I was just doing so many things. I still read a book to two a week, and sometimes I review it and sometimes I don't. Sure. Um, but, yes, I still do the reviews. And I'm actually wow. – I can't really talk about it now, but I'm involved in a project that's going to be doing um, – book reviews on a semi-professional basis or semi-regular basis. Oh, nice. Very On a professional nice. So it's going to be books okay, that I've already reviewed. I, can, okay. I can't talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's going to be books that I have already reviewed and books that obviously I haven't read yet. So um, right. if anybody wants to send me their book, I'm open. I can't promise you when I will get to it, but I promise you that sure. I will get to it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because I want to throw it out there because you never know who's listening. It could be a producer. It could be this person, this person. Are you all, Do you extend out to film reviews as well? Because I do those as well too, but I was just curious if you do film review since you're in the, the realm. Um, I haven't. I mean, I would if somebody, if somebody wants my opinion, uh, I'll do it, but I haven't thought to do that because it, I'm, doing, I'm doing so much. And to be fair right. – I'm just learning, you know, I am only, I've only been on the other side of the camera for like three years. So Mm -hmm. I, because I'm still learning. Sorry about that. I don't know where that came from. Audio technical difficulty. Go on. I'm sorry. Okay. um, (laughs) That was interesting. Um, I know, right? It just clicked down all of a sudden. Go ahead. It's interesting. It's like an alien, you know, coming in and talking. Welcome Um, to my house. Thanks. (laughs) <laughs> um, oh. because I'm because I'm so new to the industry and I find myself learning mm-hmm. um, I can give my opinion on a movie but it would be as a viewer status and I wouldn't want people to think I'm doing it from a director standpoint because from a, from ah. a director standpoint I'm learning you know um, sure. that shot what have you but if I didn't like the story 
then I didn't like the story. And people can do that to me too. You know, I'm working on a book and when I put it out there, if you think it's great, tell me. If you think I have my head up my ass, tell me that too. I don't care. Cause <laughs> it's going to be my first. <laughs> you know, I deserve it. I've given a lot of shit. If I hated somebody's book, I, but I will just, I will tell you why. I, I won't just say this okay. sucks. I will tell you why I didn't like it. Nice. Nice. Um, I like that. I w- yeah. I mean, and, and stuff isn't for everyone. I mean, I try to read everything, but I am not into books where the woman is some weak, sniveling dumbass who just drops <laughs> her knees in front of not surprised at all. Or she's a strong alpha woman until the, the right quote guy comes in and all of a sudden she's submissive. Like, come on, knock it off. Okay? We don't all have a dream to be submissive. Stop treating us like it. Correct. Um, I agree. But, you know, if it's, if it's mutual, if it's, if it's done right, then, then fine. But um, So, yeah, to answer your question the long about way, yes, I would. Okay do a film review but as a viewer and not as a filmmaker nice okay i understand completely thank you for that now one of the elements about you that i find really super intriguing is that you've said you can actually do your own stunts and fight choreography now that's not the norm when it comes to all actors either so um i want you to talk a bit about that especially for people that are listening in that might be getting into the industry or etc is do you find that to be a vital component meaning that do you think that there is some feasibility to saying okay when you get on a set and say you know what i could do my own stunts and choreography are they more or less likely to use you or is that kind of a moot point because i've never really talk to somebody who like did their own stunts and, and is able to do that um a lot of us do believe it or believe it or not um really? on the indie well on on the sag on the sag level you can't i mean i mean it depends right. on on the sag level if it's like indie film then then yeah but the higher up you go in production like the higher of a name you are the more of a name you are the more they won't let okay. you um, and that's for insurance purposes, because if you get hurt, then production stops and millions of dollars are lost. Gotcha. So that's just a lot okay. of things to do. On indie film, they don't Got care. <laughs> they don't care about you on indie huh. film. Um, but I okay. was, when I did all my own stunts, it was either SAG ultra low budget or it was not, or I was non-union at that point. Um, okay. I've trained, I was, I was in, um, you know, I was in military basic training and I've done, you know, what you do in basic training. And I was trained in firearms, not just there, but my dad was, was in the Navy and my grandfather was, was army. And they both taught me how to handle a firearm and how to throw a knife and how to do things. Like I wasn't treated quote, like a girl. And I, and I really appreciate that. Um, they taught me how to, to handle weapons responsibly. Okay. And um, I, I took kickboxing classes, um, you know, just to get in shape, basically. But you learn a lot from that. I took martial arts growing up, so that's where the um, that's where the the stunt training comes in. I didn't go to a stunt school. I don't didn't learn like what professional stunt people do. Okay. Uh, I don't know it to that extent. So if there's a basic fight scene with a with a sword or a weapon, um, and being in D and D, you know, I was in SCA and I learned sword training and stuff. Uh, I can do that, but I can't do it to the extent of someone who went to a professional stunt school. Ah, I understand does it, completely. Does it, I help? Do. Uh, it does. Mm-hmm. It does help sometimes. I mean, it depends on the film. Like I see castings um, playing an assassin, blah blah blah. Please note if you have any stunt or weapon training at all. So it can help if they ask you to audition and you demonstrate it, but. Um, I just happened to know how to do it already when I was doing like cleric and and those films. That helps. And it's fun, fun to do it yourself. It really is. Oh, and I imagine so, not to mention the fact, of course, I would, I would think that that kind of, once again, that theme we're talking about, setting yourself apart from other actors and individuals, it makes you more uh, viable, or I should say, uh, more of a commodity, in my opinion. Not that you're not to begin with, but I do think uniqueness is something that stands out. I find that to be a unique quality myself. Speaking of unique, hello, I've seen you on the cover of, let's see, three books that I know of, The Cold of Night, Tragically Wicked, and Dark Angels of Valhalla, if I got that right. So how does one get on a book cover? Because that's kick-ass, isn't it? (laughs) Right? Well, it is. There's a lot of people that are um, popular uh, on on book covers. 
um, it tends to be more for either stock photos, which I've seen a lot okay. of indie authors, the same stock photo, uh, mm -hmm. or there's one or two guys that somehow got in and all the other, you know, writers are now using them. But the cold of night cipher licks is a friend of mine. We're both from Pennsylvania and okay. she was writing. Um, that's actually the sequel. Yes. That's actually the sequel to darkest before dawn. Um, oh, okay. And, and those are both, um, those are both vampire novels. They're both very good. And I'm not just saying that cause she's a friend of mine. Uh, it, it is, they are that. <laughs> Seriously. They are very yeah. good books. They are they are very good books. Um, and then N.L. Hoffman, I was a beta reader for her first book, and then when she was coming out with this series about Valkyries, and only book one is out is is out right now. Um, okay. But I wrote to her and I said, you know, I've done some cover modeling. Um, if you ever want to model, you know, just shoot me a message. And she wrote me back and asked me what. You know, I would charge and said, well, I would charge this, and the photographer would charge that. And she's like, well, that's not bad at all. So, um, so I did that shoot, and then there's another book that I'm going to be on the cover of. It's not out yet, though. It's called uh, Across Our Stars, Evangeline. Okay. And okay. Um, that, is, that is Alicia Payne and uh, Nicole Taylor. So look out for that one, too, because that's not out yet, but I will also be on the cover of that one. Oh, that's awesome. I absolutely love it. See, and I'm totally jealous because I'm like, look at her. Not only is she pretty, but she's successful. And people take her picture and put it on a damn book cover. 90% of us <laughs> don't have that happening. So thanks a lot. Now we all feel fat and inferior. Well, you, in, you have to things. try, though. You, you have to try, though. You, uh, how, how do you do it? Find authors, particularly indie authors, because right. publishing houses have their own cover art that right. often doesn't even have people on it. But go search the Internet. Find any uh, indie authors. Have some pictures taken, um, not just okay. you at a barbecue or whatever, like have some right. professional pictures taken so you have them. And you don't have to charge mm -hmm. a lot. You know, there's always somebody like on Model Mayhem or something that will do it TFP to help you out and vice versa or charge very little. That's, and then that's get really them, cool, actually. Have, yeah, and then get them, get them done and then reach out to indie authors and say, I'm looking, you know, if you're looking for cover models, please consider me. Here's my info. And you'd be surprised how many people would go, well, okay, if I have something you fit, then I'll let you know. You know, it's not, Isn't it's that not awesome? impossible. Yeah. There's a lot of, well, a lot of indie who can't afford uh, cover art or, or to hire models. And that's why they get stock photos because they can't hire anybody. They, they can't afford to. So if you just reach out to people, you'd be surprised who will reach back. That's, and that, and that's really cool, actually, because if there's somebody that's listening in, I mean, I've done modeling before, but as you get older, obviously it gets harder. And I'm like, I don't even know if I'd like to see myself on the cover. I mean, I think it's kind of weird. Like, I just have a thing with that because I'm like, doesn't that ever freak you out? Like looking at yourself like, oh, look, there's me. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> looking at you, but not looking at you the same way. You know what I'm saying, right? Because you've seen your picture and then you I see know. yourself like that. And it, it, You know what I mean? It's a it's an adjustment, isn't it? Or are you kind of like, yeah, bring me more. I mean, is that the kind of thing that you would enjoy no, doing more and more no, of? No. Yes, I would like to do more of it. Actually, uh, I I love ah. uh, I love being artistic. And at this point, you know, I used to charge. I mean, the industry and economy has changed, and I I used to be like, this is my day rate. But now I'm like, just work with me. You know, tell me what you can afford because I've just nice. gotten to the point where I love to create. And I know, <clears throat> being doing my own projects, people have been willing to work with me and help me out to make my dream come true. So if I can pay mm -hmm. that forward a little bit, you know, just pay my gas. You know, if, if there's awesome. gas and toll, maybe buy me like a chicken Caesar salad and we're good. Cause I, <laughs> no, no, I totally I mean, get what you're saying though, because sometimes that's got to do it. You got to do that to get the job done. You know, not that, not that I'm saying everybody should work for free all the time and I can't afford to all the time. I got to pay rent. Right. But of at the course. same time, if you're like, all I can pay you is, X, Y, Z. All right. At least you're being honest with me and you're not going to try to shortchange me later. Like if you promise me a hundred dollars an hour and you try to knock it down to 20, then I'm going to be pissed. Right. Off. But of if you're course. like, this, that is, makes sense. this is what I have. It's going to take X amount of hours. I'll get a makeup artist. I'll buy you lunch. I'll pay all of your gas, whatever. You know, I'm willing to work with people because like I've said, people have been willing to work with me and that's only fair. 
That's awesome. That is. That's terrific. See, so there you go. She wants to be on a book cover. She wants you to help with her film. She'd probably model if you asked her to, and she'll do your stunts. This is what we know of her so far, and this is like 20 <laughs> minutes in or so. Isn't this awesome? Okay, but so I now we have to talk about the – I'm not and I'm not – <laughs> oh, okay. I got it. And now I guess I should ask the inevitable question. I know the, I'm pretty darn sure I know the answer. So here's the other thing. If you're a boy, will she date you? Cause I believe your status is single and I'm afraid to even go here, but I'm going to do it because two boys that I know said she's really good looking. So I'm like, fine. So we have to ask the status question. <laughs> As I understand it, you're single boys. I'd be afraid if I were you. So I'm going to ask, so, is this young lady looking to date anyone? <gasps> Here it comes. Because <laughs> I've read your post, so I know. <laughs> but I want to hear you answer that question. Mm. I'm really, mm-mm. I'm not really looking. <laughs> I'm not really looking. That's a really good, um, a good answer. I've, I've, kind of, I've, I've been seeing somebody. Um, I don't oh, want to nice. get into details. But, yeah. oh, I, oh, that's fine. That's fine. I just saw the status, and then guys are asking, and I'm like, well, she's going to be on my show anyway, so we may as well throw that out there. And that's only because, honestly, I've looked at your posts, and I've seen you're like, you don't need a diamond. You need this. You know what I mean? So you're, like, totally about the whole me, girl power thing. So that's why I'm like, right. well, let's well, just see what guys, she says about guys dating. Need to know, though, guys need to know, though, if I do date them, I don't care about jewelry. I'm not getting married. You know, I, I, I was married. I got married way too young. And I love, you know, nice. the guy's great, wonderful. I just, I just didn't, I felt like I was getting into that societal trap that we spoke of earlier. And I just right. didn't want that. You know, we were, we weren't even married and people were like, so when are you going to have kids? And I'm like, oh my God, oh here my we God. go. Like that, that right. marriage children thing is not me. I am not ever going to get married again. I am never going to have children. So if that's what you want in your future, keep that in mind. Um, Got it. I am not going to give up my career for anybody. Nobody is that important. Sure. If you love me that much, you're, you're okay with it. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't ever give me a diamond. It's it's another form of oppression. It wasn't even a thing until they found the mines in the 20s, and all of a sudden it was about programming women to chase diamonds. And No, I don't care. Um, See? So, That's her stance. <laughs> you, you want to feel just, my I- utmost desire? Build me a library. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Really? You literally build me a library. Like, that's it. That's how you get me. That is. That's way cool. There you go. That and <laughs> let's talk about this one. This is the other cool part about you that my kids are like, oh, my God, really? That's the factor. And I'm sure you know what I'm going to ask you. You are the only guest I have had in almost four and a half years that has ever done any form of mortuary studies, which I found interesting because <laughs> my daughter is my daughter literally is in college trying to be Dexter right now. And I'm like, oh, awkward to the highest trying degree be because I, I don't do that. She, if you, do you remember the show what? Dexter on Showtime? She's, she's studying blood splatter analysis. You know what I mean? So, like, if there's a scene oh, of a crime, okay. she goes there and, ana- you know, analyzes. So, like, Dexter okay, used to okay, go. Okay. So, it weirds me out because I'm like, really? This is what you – I mean, she, like, gets all excited about this. And I'm like, yay. No, I couldn't do that. Thank you very much. So, I find it intriguing. Um, forensics is very interesting. You know, you're part of, I mean, I, I was the funeral end of it. I was, I was in a funeral mm-hmm. home. So I was like, mm-hmm. you know, the last resort to the whole thing, but forensics right. in, in itself is, is very interesting. I did some of my, uh, internship in a morgue, um, see, cause oh. you can do, um, location or you can do in school. And I, I would rather do on location. Everybody would. But it's hard to get because everybody's trying to get on location internship. Um, but yeah, you're you're part of a bigger picture. You're part of the mystery to solve, especially when there's a crime, because you're part of the the puzzle. You're one of the pieces that that goes together. And if you can tell somebody what happened to their loved one, you know they might not thank you directly. They might not know you're doing it, but you're still serving a greater purpose. Right. Well, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit because I'm going to be interviewing. Do you know who Dr. Amalu is? Did you see the movie Concussion? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the yeah, guy yeah, that, yeah. In the, that plays the pathologist. And so I'm going to be interviewing him on my show eventually. And I'm like, well, oh, what do you ask a guy who, like, spends his, like, days in a mortuary? I'm like – where's the clever question there? You know what I mean? I'm kind of like racking my brain, like, well, what's a really smart question to ask somebody who deals with, well, 
dead people. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't want to sound like an ass because well, he's very smart. People? Sounds like, well, we all um, he works on. So, oh, I gotcha. He, he's more brain relative, if I'm not mistaken. Like he deals with the brain to try to figure out what the cause of death was, et cetera. He's very big with the whole CTU thing, the whole nine yards with the brain okay. and the football players and stuff. So that's okay. why I'm trying to rack my brain a bit. So, so ask him, um, so ask him, where do you take the tissue, tissue sample from, what part of the brain, and what are you looking for? Ooh. And how do you – Oh, good one. Because That's if there's really the good. temporal, the occipital, the frontal, yeah, they all um, – they're different parts of the brain control different parts of the body. Okay. That's awesome. Oh, my God, look at that. You're amazing. See, because I was like, yeah, yeah you know, most of us don't – yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure you'll remind me, or I'll ask you again or whatever. Now, the other flip yeah, side to that is this. Oh, you could send me something? That would be even better. No, 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 not send. Well, I could probably, I can look stuff up for you. But, yeah, I can I can send you. If you forget the question, just let me know or forget the answer. Just uh, email me, and I'll I'll email the response back to you. You betcha. Okay, awesome. Now, here's my question. Um, well, I should say it's my kid's question because, of course, I said not only does this lady used to do work here, but I'm like, okay, so I came across the words self-proclaimed real vampire. And my kids were like, oh, my God, you know, because they've seen Dracula really. and they've seen all this cool okay, stuff. Let me say and I'm this. like, let me say this. let's talk about this. That whole thing that whole thing got blown way out of proportion. I know, I know a friend of mine. A friend of mine runs a party in Philadelphia called Dracula's Ball. He used to do it like four times a year. I don't know if he does nice. it that often now. Um, okay. And I kind of, I kind of grew up with him. Like he, I was going there. It used to be at Shampoo in Philly, which has since closed down, and that venue was gorgeous. Um, but he knew me since before I was twenty-one going there. Uh, so uh-huh. he was doing, he was doing a. You know, he knew people who were doing a documentary on um, the goth scene, which is, you know, a subculture and people who dress all in black and go to parties and how we're not all bad people and whatever. Um, And people were like, you kind of look like vampires and blah, blah, blah. So we, instead of, you know, some of the people, they make fake fangs or whatever part of costuming. And I was really big into the the New York goth scene at the time. I had to back off because, again, I got so busy, I, I can't even go out and have fun anymore. <laughs> not not sure. that way, but um, <laughs> I'm working so much. But um, <clears throat> but I was one of the people that wanted to help him out with it. And everybody else was really involved and, and sincere in what they were doing, and I didn't want to make it seem like I was the only actor. Sure. Um, so then the PR people chose me out of four or five of us to represent the show to try and get it picked up as, as a show. Um, uh-huh. So I got all this publicity, and I got paid for some of the publicity, and I got paid for a lot of the shows and whatnot. So that kind of got, like, because I'm an actor, and I guess I was really good at my job, People tend to think ah. a whole slew of things that are, yeah. Got that it. Are not true. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, you know, because obviously a child hears this and they're like, "Oh my god." Yeah. <sighs> no, I'm I'm an actor. <laughs> I hate to gotcha. I hate to burst the bubble, but you know, I hate to ruin their their. Thing, but. No, and, and you know that there's stuff out there because if you Google you, obviously, that's one of the first things I did was just to read different things, different articles, stuff like that. And obviously, of course, it's been brought up more than once. So that's why I was like, okay, either she's really the deal and that's the case or it's got to be a mixture of what I was thinking you were thinking. Now my kids are going to be yeah. terribly disappointed. So I'm just going to pretend like I didn't yeah. ask you that question because I, they probably were wanting to hear, oh, my God, she has blood and she does this stuff. And it's like look, she howls no. at the moon and she sleeps at night in a coffin and all this no. whatever. Okay, so wonderful. No, people, good that you're normal. People also, people, <laughs> people also associated with that with the fact that I did go to mortuary school and I did work in a funeral mm-hmm. home. So people kind right. of put those things together, and I'm like, they're jobs, you know? They're they're, they're jobs. Right. Like we're we work in a funeral home. We're not that weird. It's just a job to us, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely awesome, though. That, I think it's cool, though, that you've studied something that's very different than most of us. And that takes a lot of guts, man, because I, I got to tell you, I can't be in a room with a dead person. I mean, I don't even know how you can – I can't even – yeah. 
Uh, I have a hard enough time with real people. I'm like, I was just going to say, I, there are days where I'm like, how do you deal with real people? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Especially. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> There, there are some days when I look at myself and go, why did you leave the morgue? Why? Why? <laughs> oh, come on. We're fun out here. Some of us are fun, I uh, should say. It's one of those well, things. Well, it's, it's interesting, that's for sure. Yes. Now, before we start talking about your films and TV that you've done, I want to throw this out to people. So if you really want to become a good friend of hers, I would have said, man, if you want to date her, these are facts you should know. This is what I can tell you that I know about her. First of all, She gets bummed out when she takes down her Christmas tree. Very similar to myself because I get very sad when my Christmas tree comes down, although I leave it up for two months after the fact. I know that she's a fan of NASCAR. I know she likes her tea because she just got a new tea. You just got something from your mom not so long ago, as a matter of fact. A new tea maker, right, or something, a new tea. What do you call it? I read that somewhere on your wall, someplace. Um, Well, I love my coffee, but I also love green tea. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Ah, yes. The, I, I, love, saw, I, I don't know, maybe it was a, okay, there was some kind of something relative to tea, but we've got the green tea thing covered, obviously, and of course, from what I can tell you, you're a fan of both Star Trek and Alan Re- Reichman, right, the the guy that just passed away, Alan the Harry Reichman. Potter guy, wasn't he phenomenal, wasn't yes. he awesome, I loved him, oh, loved, I loved, loved, loved him. I get sad every time, um, you know, when I'm watching, because there, there's a, a picture of him, somebody made a meme. Like he was doing an interview, I don't remember with who, but but somebody said, um, you know, how long are you going to be in this Snape thing? And he he supposedly responded something to the effect of, when my grandchildren come up to me when I'm in my 80s, and they say, um, do you still love being a part of Harry Potter? My response will be always. Wow. And um, and every time I see the last Harry Potter movie. When um, when they're doing that flashback, when Harry mm-hmm. uh, like his tears and he's got his face in the in the thing, Aww. and he learns he learns all of that it was Snape protecting him the whole time, and his Patronus is a doe, and Dumbledore turns to him and says, "Lily, after all this time," and Snape says, "Always." Aww. and it it makes me tear up every time because. Um, you know, I kind of not grew up with them. I mean, I was a little bit older, but really good sure. story, really good stories become a part of your soul. That's how you know they're good stories. Agreed. And you learn so much from some book series that um, they they move you and, and the good actors become that character and then you feel... Like you weren't watching Alan Rickman, you were watching Snape, and you you felt scared like Harry felt scared in the first movie when you thought it was him trying to attack Harry, and then when he died, you felt what the characters felt, and that's how you know it was well done. I like that. Same that's thing with awesome. the, yeah, same thing with the Goblin King, and you know. Ah, so David there Boyer is some. Did, David Bowie, I did grow up with. I, you know, ever since I was a kid, I was listening to David Bowie. We all did, I and think. I was yes, definitely. Five, six. I was five or six when I went to see Labyrinth, so I was, a, I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking, okay, she just said the words. I cried. Have you looked at you? You look so strong and so feminine. Honestly, you would scare me. And and that's hard to do. So I'm like, did she just say the words, I cry? I have a hard time believing that. In fact, I was going to ask you that relative to the acting component. Do you struggle with that? Because I'm like I said, you're you're just so strong by nature in your appearance and stature, et cetera. Is that a struggle for you? Would that surprise some of us who look at you and think, oh, my God, like I said, she, she would never cry. Look at her. Um, well, there's some books. There's only th- like three or four books in my life that have ever made me cry. Um, and there's a couple of movies and by a couple, I mean like, you know, three. Um, right. <laughs> I don't want to say what, what they are cause they're, cause they're personal to me, but from an actor no, standpoint, um, that, you know, from an actor standpoint, do I struggle with crying or not crying? Do you struggle? Well, for you, I'm just wondering if you do, if it is a struggle for you to cry, because like I said, a lot of it's appearance, too. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're like, you appear to be a character that's very strong and very together. And so it's like, did she just say the words I cry? Because I'm like, I'm not buying that. Well, strong people are people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you know what? I will say I am a strong person. Uh, I, I don't let a lot of things into my life, and I keep most people at arm's length. Um, there's a there's some things that might upset me, but I don't let it I don't let it get to me most of the time. And when I say most of the time, if I'm doing acting, then I'm able to channel that and use sure. it then. Um, last year, almost a year ago my mentor, like the first agent and manager I ever had, um, passed away. So we're coming up upon the year anniversary and watching the uh-huh. Daytona kickoff um, like a week and a half ago was really mm-hmm. hard for me because I, I, when I turned 18 up until I was about, up until I was about 30 <laughs> I did the NASCAR races. I did, I did most of them. Uh, you know, I went to Talladega. I was a pit girl for a couple of years. I went to Talladega. Uh, I, I've been to Daytona, um, Bristol, Charlotte. I've been to, uh, you know, most of the NASCAR places. So NASCAR now for me is like, oh, God, i got to deal with the, you know, loss of – I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be talking to you right now if it weren't for that person who drove me. Um. So a lot of the, it is difficult for me to to cry because I just don't let myself get to that point. I put it aside Ah. and compartmentalize. Okay. Um, Tears can be a waste of energy. If you cry all the time about everything, it's a waste of energy. Um, I get that. Not that people shouldn't have emotions. They should, and strong people do have emotions. They just don't show them all the time. And that's, that's okay. what makes, you know, that's, that's a character of strong people to know when to show an emotion and how. If you broke down at every little thing, you know, that's not, that's not strong. You can't do that. You can't break down at every little thing. You have to deal with life. Right. So course. there's a time and a place. And being an actor, it's very convenient, you know, when you have to cry. Okay, mm-hmm. now let me, go through, let me go through the file box of what I can cry about. You don't have right. to know why I'm crying. You, know, you have to know why the character is crying, but you don't have to know why mm-hmm. I am. Exactly. That's an awesome, that's that's an that's awesome thing right there. Exactly, yeah. but- <laughs> no, it totally does. It does. All right, now we're going to talk about how more fabulous she is. Like, we haven't already listed, like, 18,000 things oh, already. God. So, get this. Three different wins, three different places, because there's a question relative to this. Obviously, the North um, East Film Festival winner of Best Unproduced Screenplay for I'm going to try to say Absinthia. Is that correct? Okay. Diamond Film Festival, Best Actress for Throwing in the Towel. And, of course, Brightside Tavern Film Festival for both Best Script for Absinthia and Best Horror for Organs, if I could talk, of Opportunity. And that's awesome because I love C.J. Cullen. Brightside is his creation. Love, love, love love that festival. Now, here's my question. Isn't he? He's not only nice, love- but he, he has it together, and I like it. I've been to Brightside. I actually met some new friends there the last time that I went there. I loved it. It's a really cozy, really neat film festival. That's just my opinion. It's, We're very, it's, some love family, it's kind of a family um, orientation because a lot of festivals right. are – some of them are spread out, and some of them mm-hmm. are so prestigious that they're kind of cold. But Brightside mm-hmm. and even North, even um, – Northeast Film Festival are very, um, you know, kind of uh, intimate in a way. You know, you, they're, right. they're smaller festivals and they're run by people who care about people and why they're there. So, you know, they'll, they'll come exactly up to you right. and they know everybody's there and you feel like, you know, you don't feel like you're lost in the shuffle. Even if you're not nominated oh, no, for anything. I agree. Even, if, even if you're somebody who is, oh, I was just background in this film. Blah, blah, blah. Well, we're happy to have you. You know, everybody's happy that you're there. And they don't make you feel like, you know, they're doing you a favor like a lot of festivals are. It's like you're doing them a favor by being there, and they appreciate that. Right. Now, that actually leads right along to the question I was going to ask you, obviously. To those that are listening in, well, first of all, I grew up in the era where, obviously, I thought as a little girl, oh, my God, I can't wait to get to the red carpet. And now I've been there, of course, and I couldn't wait to get to Hollywood. You know, the, the Hollywood was so impressive to me, et cetera. And now we live in a day and age, in my personal belief, that with all our indie films and indie film festivals, there would be just 
literally Hollywood, and, and I guess we, we – Indie film has opened up a lot of doors for, and a lot of opportunities for people, and it allows them to make film on their own terms without having to have, let's say, the A-listers, A-list celebrities, et cetera, because obviously no one has a budget for that. So here's my question to you. Talk to the audience that's listening in terms of why it's significant to not only help to support indie film, but what separates indie film from big-budget Hollywood outside of dollars and cents? Hmm. <clears throat> Indie film is, um, as the word suggests, independent. Now, a lot of people think if you have a million-dollar budget and a star name, you're still independent. No, you're not. You are right. independent of all of that stuff, and that's what, it, that's what it means. That's what it's supposed to mean. Not that you can't mm-hmm. have a name or I don't respect you if you, if you have a name or you have a million-dollar budget. Great. Good for you. I'm happy for you. Sure. But you're not independent. You're small budget, but you're not independent. And 10 years ago, you know, when I made a movie called, uh, 12 years ago now at this point, when I made a movie called Ghost Watcher 2, um, everything Dave Cross did, I'm going to throw him a bone here because he deserves the credit. Everything he did was independent. He went out and he got his budget on his own. I don't know how he did it, but he did. Uh, Everyone he hired to his credit was a no-name, including me at that point. I hadn't even been in Playboy yet. Um, everything he did was, you know, he, he, he paid people what he could afford to pay them. And we got a movie on the shelves of Blockbuster and, and West Coast Video and, you know, whatever video stores there were at the time. And then along comes Netflix right. and screwed everything up. Um, now they do everything in how I'm not trying to say they, <laughs> no offense, Netflix. Um, but, it, you know, the, the video stores helped indie people because people would walk by and see the cover and flip it over and go, hmm, okay. And taking something out of someone's hands physically kind of, it it disassociates the the viewer uh, from the project. Now they scroll through and they go, oh, who's in it? Mm, Okay. If they don't know anybody, they pass. And we have become a culture who thinks we want socialism and then turn around and support big budgets. You know, people who say they wanted a socialist president are not donating to indie film. They're donating to somebody who's famous who has a Kickstarter. Kickstarter is mm-hmm. not supposed to be for people who already have money. It's supposed to be for the little guy and guy. Correct. Correct. Well, well, how do we know it's not good? How do we know it's going to make money? How do we know that, you know, our money isn't going to so, – well, somebody who has $20 million does not need your money. Correct. Somebody who has no money and wants to make an art project needs your money. So you need to put right. your money where your mouth is. And I'm going to go ahead and call people out on this. If you're going to claim you want socialism, then you have to actually be a part of that, which means supporting Correct. indie film. Going to indie projects and going to festivals that aren't Sundance and aren't, you know, con. And, again, no offense to them, but no. they're not indie at this point. Not anymore. Right. I know they're not. And, and it's sad. Watching, watching a movie on Netflix or – Whatever. I mean, if people still sell DVDs now, I, I have a whole bunch lying around because nobody buys DVDs anymore. Um, right. Streaming a video and not bootlegging it. Paying for that independent movie. It's a dollar, it's right. five dollars, a fucking dollar. Okay? You've got, you spend seven dollars at Starbucks, you can pay a fucking dollar to stream an indie film. And okay. that really pisses me off more than anything is people who try and say that everyone should have a fair shot, but they're not giving everyone a fair shot. And that's the difference between indie, indie and Hollywood. And a lot right. of Hollywood and a lot of people say that they, you know, they want to be a part of Hollywood and they want things to be equal, but only until they get ahead and then they want everybody else suppressed again. And a lot of Hollywood is all, uh, okay, sorry, Hollywood, but stop it with the fucking politics. You are an actor, you are, I knew a, singer, that was coming. you are a director. Do your job. If, I'm not saying don't have an opinion or don't believe in something, but stop using your celebrity status as a megaphone for everyone else. That's not your job, and you shouldn't be doing that. I'm probably going to get heat for that and whatever, but, you know, and not that I don't, <laughs> and not that I don't have an opinion and not that I don't express my opinion. But I'm not okay. insisting that because I make movies, you should do what I do and think how I think. That's where the problem right. starts. 
is that we're, we're ostracizing people now who don't think like we do, and that's wrong. We can't have a productive society if we don't work with each other. If we're only working with people who think like we do, then nothing is going to get accomplished because it's going to be the this or that, him or her, black or white, gay or straight. It's not or. It never will be or. It will always be and. And people need to learn that. And that's a big problem that I have with Hollywood right now. And a lot of people have Uh a problem with Hollywood. I, and I have heard that before, actually. This isn't the, really the first time we've had some conversations, some friends and I, relatively similar to that same thing, obviously. Um, so that, that's a perfect segue to talking about steampunk, of course, because you have this um, project, you have a Kickstarter that's going on that's actually ending today. So if I'm the average person, because to me, you know, every week, because I, we both know so many people that are doing indie film, someone's always asking you to, obviously, donate to something or someone. So I want you to take as much time as you like to explain the premise of this. Why should I give you my five? dollars and not you know john gallagher down the road or whomever else is doing a film what is pertinent for us to know to make us want to invest in steampunk and believe in it as much as you do well first of all props to john gallagher he's a great director he's a great friend of mine and he gave me some he actually contributed to my kickstarter so i'm going to go ahead and say thank you john gallagher right on the air we love john Uh, gallagher on the air i'm a huge fan huge yeah Uh, he is a really guy but Absinthia is a science fiction, steampunk-inspired uh, TV drama. That is, a, It takes place in a mythical planet, in a mythical future, and is about a social revolution. So it's kind of about what's going on right now. It's about the, uh, the crew of the Absinthian who is hired by an organization called Triangle. They are a band of uh, mercenaries, and they're hired by Triangle to infiltrate the current government, which is a monarchy. It's a one-world government monarchy and take them down. So they do that from the inside out. One of the characters, Commander Vaja de Cardia, marries into the monarchy, and she is trying to infiltrate the culture, become a part of it, and tear it down from the inside out. And do it in such ah. a way that they are not blamed, no one is blamed for anything. So that's her job, and every part of the crew has a job. Every part of Triangle has a job. Every person has a job. But every person has an agenda, and every person has uh, a a reason for wanting to do the things that they do. And, of course, the the monarchy is – they're trying to keep it, obviously. They're they're in charge. But also the question of, you know, wearing the crown is also a burden. It's not just privilege. It's responsibility. And you tear down this monarchy. You tear down this government. Well, now you you, you get what you want. Now what? You know, like the second act of Hamilton, it's not really a spoiler if you've read a history book. All right, you've torn you've right. torn down the government. Well, now what? Now what are you going to do? Now is what you want to be in charge? Okay, you're going to find out that the burden of the crown, the throne, really is a lot more than just having somebody feed you grapes. So nice. what happens when you want? What happens if you don't get what you want? Everybody's trying to tear you down. When you're on top, everyone wants to be where you are. So right. you have to you have to fight. You have to protect people. So it explores the government and the situation and people's thought processes from multiple points of view. I don't want to, I'm not going to tell you what happened. I was just going to say, don't tell me too much more. Obviously or tell everyone else. Okay. This is a good thing. Now there are secrets. There's a conspiracy. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff going on. That's the dun, 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 dun moment that we do that. Add that little tanto music there. (laughs) So talk to me about, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's steampunk inspired because we have science fiction we don't really have hmm. anything steampunk. We had Firefly. Uh, we had Wild Wild West with uh, Will Smith. You know, we've got some in the past. We've had some things that were steampunk. The okay. term wasn't really coined yet. Um, but steampunk is an aesthetic of basically past meets future. It's a time period when, in the Victorian era, when steam-inspired or steam-powered things were starting to uh, just up and coming but it's also very futuristic in, in women's liberation. So, for example, you could wear a corset and a dress and have all kinds of guns and weapons on you. You could have uh, a corset and pants and have all kinds of steampunk uh, gears. You could have goggles. You could have a steampunk arm or prosthetic arm made of mechanics. So it's uh, past meets future. It's the aesthetic versus the function. Or, or with the fun. This is awesome. 
This is awesome. And now, we talk to me a so bit this about... Is, this is a steam opera. This is a steam opera because it's a steampunk-inspired soap opera. So it's a, I call it a steam opera. And how ironic, considering the fact that you were on One Life to Live at one point in time. Shocker! Because tell me I wasn't shocked. <laughs> I looked on your IMDb, I'm like, holy hell, One Life to Live. Dude, I yeah. remember those days. That's awesome. I grew up watching that show, so it was so, like, it hurt me so bad when it went off the air because... Right. Those were like my, you know, I kind of felt like they were my family. I know that sounds really cheesy, but. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Not at all, actually, because you grow up with that stuff, like Knott's Landing. Remember that? Like Falcon Crest, Knott's Landing, General Hospital, you know, all that stuff from back in the day. Yeah. Because I thought, oh, my God, how cool is that? One life to live. She's on one life to live, man. See? She just gets cooler, like, every five seconds. Um, that was my so... favorite role ever. Really? On it? Yeah, because that's a surprise. Yeah, because um, you know, because I grew up watching that show, and my mom grew up watching that show, and that was a big deal to her to have me on there. So okay. because it meant to her, it just kind of you know. That's so sweet. That's why. Aw, <laughs> look at that. That's sweet. Okay, we want to step back to Steampunk for just a second. So talk to us, because obviously the campaign is ending. How close are you? How close do you need to be? Because that's important for folks to know. We need to get to the dollars and cents, so to speak. Actually, um, I was asking for 5000 Now, um, Kickstarter takes a fee, and Amazon, who owns Kickstarter, takes a fee. So we're down right. about 10%. I don't know how much each takes. Uh, I think Kickstarter takes three. I don't know what Amazon takes, but Roundup, we're about, you know, 10% down. So we actually, and I am happy, and I'm going to knock on wood, we actually <gasps> did meet our goal. We are at 52A. <gasps> oh, my God. But, but obviously, the more we get, the better we can do, and the more I can pay my actors and not have to have them work on, you know, just for food and and travel pay. So we could use a little bit more, and this would be ongoing. Okay. So not only would you be getting the pilot, you would be getting subsequent episodes that follow after. There is a reason you should donate and why there could very well be subsequent episodes, but it's another thing uh, that I can't talk about yet. You're killing you're me. Just, I'm going to come on the show, yeah, but I can't yeah, talk about it. Yeah, I can't. Woman. I can't do killing it. Me. You know, not, uh, nothing's set in stone yet. No ink is dry yet, so I'm not allowed to say anything. But just trust me, it will totally be worth your while because you more than likely will be able to see this somewhere soon. <gasps> oh, she's so dropping a hint right there. So now we want I, I want you to be specific about this because I know how this works, but most people that are listening in may not. So let's say they're sitting at home and they're like, all right, well, we'll help this gal out. Um, is $5 too little? Is $20 too much? W- what does that donation mean, basically? When they're handing you this money, is it, does it have to be a set amount? Do you need a set amount? No. What that, you, know, is, you know what I'm talking about? Just are, give them an idea of what they're looking at. Okay. Well, there are what they call perks, meaning that right. each level – uh, has a different perk. For example, um, let me go to the thing here. You can you can sure. donate. You you can contribute as little as a dollar. Um, if that's all you have, then that's perfectly fine. You can pledge three dollars. You can pledge five because you believe in indie film. I have a seven dollar pledge that says no corporation day. It says instead of oh. giving money to giant co- companies that don't need it, I decided to help us today. So Ooh, um, look at that. There's a thank you in the credits. Uh, for twenty dollars, you can get a signed picture of the cast. Or there are two more. Sorry, there's one more perk left of uh, the T-shirt with the Absinthia logo for twenty dollars. You can be, uh, and then there are future perks with. Um, if you miss that one, you can get a T-shirt for thirty dollars. You can be an associate producer for a hundred. The associate producer platinum is you get your name on IMDb as an associate producer with the T-shirt. You get to be on set and be part of the background for 150, and you can be an alien if you want to. Cool. I have that one, is awesome. I have, one, I have one set of steampunk prop wings for uh, $200. I had them made and I used them in the trailer, 
Um, the ones in the trailer are not the prop wings. The prop wings are just what I use for reference purposes. Okay. I have um, I have some prop guns. You can have lunch. Um, you can pick my brain and interview me uh, having lunch for 200 You can have dinner with a cast member for 300 You can get one Ooh. steampunk court for 300 uh, if your business wants, perks. if your business wants uh, for eight hundred dollars, you can get some special business publicity sponsorship, meaning basically that we pimp you everywhere, including the promotional postcards that would be printed with "sponsored by" and your business's name on it. Or you can be an executive producer for a thousand. Now you do Dang. not have if you all if all you have is two dollars, you don't have to pick a perk. You can donate without picking a perk at all. If you don't want a perk for whatever reason, that's, that's fine. You can contribute. Just type in the amount and put in your information, and you can contribute without getting a perk. If you if you contribute a certain amount, though, I will I will send you a T-shirt. Just as a sure. Uh, that is absolutely awesome. Look at that. See, folks? So you can help her out, and you get perks along with it, which is absolutely awesome, and she made her goal, which is awesome. Now, um, the two last things I'm going to ask you about are relative to your TV and film career, obviously, because clearly she's done enough of it. First of all, I think it's so cute. I don't want to say cute because that's a stupid word. Scream yeah. queen. All the research. I ke- it keeps coming up. Scream queen, scream queen. It's like she's living in a pool of blood, folks, and that's all she does is film in blood, apparently, because she's just screaming or yeah. covered in blood for some reason, et cetera. So would you, would you say that you are – well, first of all, are you a real live uh, scream queen, meaning that you go home, you watch slasher films at night, et cetera, you do all the smart things that the dumb girls don't do in a movie, so to speak. They call them dumb girls. I heard this the other day. One of my guy friends said, you know that girl is so dumb, right? She already knows the stalker is like – Runs through the forest, and what does she do? She stays in the forest and runs a hi- hides behind a tree or something like that. And that, and she, he's well, like, why is, do they dumb her down? Well, that is one of the stereotypes that women are fighting against, that the pretty mm-hmm. girl is always the stupid one, and the smart one right? isn't so pretty. Um, Amen. I used to be, yeah, I, I used to be, I mean, they dub any woman who does, like, two horror films a scream queen. Really? Um, so... Yeah, it's pretty much anybody who's been to horror films. And it used to be it used to be a badge of honor. It used to have to be like right. do like ten that, but yeah. Um but yeah, it's I used to do that. They were fun to do, but you know, I didn't just want to do that, so that's why I branched out into doing right. other projects, uh drama, comedy. I'm not known for those things though, because the indie horror film is a very uh small circle. Everybody kind of knows everybody who's been in every movie. I'm seeing that. Um, oh, my God. But that's, that's kind of why I stopped doing them, because I just got tired of the female stereotype. Sure. You know, the guy's I always understand. the hero, and, you know, the pretty girl just and the drops not. her panties for anything, abs, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly and, right. No, I know. <laughs> and it's crazy, because um, I'm like, know, seriously? Think- why doesn't a guy die like that? Why doesn't a guy run around with his shorts off, running around, or is in a hot tub or whatever have you, and all of a sudden stands up and then, ee, 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 there's the knife. You know what I mean? That doesn't happen. Right. Or, or why doesn't why doesn't a guy chase the hot, you know, chase the hot girl? Why aren't there two guys fighting over the girl instead of two girls fighting over the guy or whatever? So, Amen. Um, See? There you so go. there's all kinds Great of movie stuff. idea. It's never, it's never the guy who's running scared in, in, in skimpy clothes through the woods. In the middle of winter. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> of course not, because that girl. doesn't look as good, of course, supposedly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I want to see, like, Charlie Hunnam or Thor or anyone hot running through anywhere, like, away from a stock. Right. I wouldn't mind that, just so you're saying. So, like, book Charlie Hunnam or someone really hot who's half naked, if not all naked, and being chased by a horror person. I would like that. See, we just made a new movie right on the show here. Thanks. So, but, just yeah, name a few. Like She's got Scrooge in the Hood, Bloody Slumber Party. They get better, folks, as we go along. Silent Night, Dead Night, A New Christmas. Uh, what was? Oh, A New Christmas Carol. I saw that, and then of course, obviously, The Witching Hour, which you talked about. Shout out to my big buddy Kevin McDonald. Love, 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 love him. Um, Kevin is he's perfect. awesome. I love him. So now I have to ask you this question because I'm not sure how closely you follow my Facebook page, but you know that you've worked with like the one of my top five people in the entire world that I want to interview ever. 
So I know when I ask you this question, you're going to be like, I have a cell phone number and I'm going to give it to you. So we're going to try this. So one of the actors in the witching hour whose male is, say it with me, and he doesn't have gray hair, so it only leaves one, right? And he's not black, so that would leave, which I hope you work for them. That's how Kevin and I actually got connected was I happened to notice that Mike, Michael, Madsen Michael Madsen was in your movie. Yes. Oh, no, I didn't meet. I didn't work with him, actually. He wasn't in my oh. team. Oh. No. <laughs> what do I have to do to get to this guy? I'm telling you. I've tried 50 ways sideways. I ask everybody who comes on, too. I'm like, I know you have his phone number. I know you're going to give it to me. We can set up this interview. I've only been trying for, like, 18 months, and I'm like, I've had it. I'm like, seriously, we're almost at the end of this. But I, I want to you ask just, you to you go on IMDb that? Pro. His, you, can, you can actually contact him directly, I think, on IMDb Pro. Seriously? Directly? Yeah. You know, nobody's told me that. Yeah. They always send me to whatchamacall, what's his name? You know, his same agent that constantly answers and doesn't answer, answers and doesn't answer, and it's really annoying. And I'm like, seriously? And I've tried everything, and, I, and I'm getting closer by the day, but I'm like, I just don't have any patience anymore. I'm like, seriously? I can get Carl Weathers. I'm pretty sure that I could get Michael Madsen, right? I mean, you know, right? You've been on my yeah, show on that yeah, people, no. right? I mean, what? I don't get it. Um, I think you can. It shouldn't I'll be that try hard. it when we get off air. Like literally, when I'm sitting around here, I'll take a look at it because I've never done the. Do I didn't do the pro thing when I came. I do, but I didn't bother to look because everybody I talk to always tells me he has this, this, and this, but no one's ever said you could contact him direct. Or like I asked about a literary agent, and then somebody thought he had a literary. Actually, maybe Kevin told me he did. Literary agent for his books and stuff. That's another angle to go. But no, I'll check that out when we're off. But we're not talking about him. We are talking about this though. So that's just a. a a summarized list of some of the movies that you've done. So here's my question to you. Oh, we don't want to forget. You did Wolf of Wall Street. Wow. Oh, yeah, I did. I don't think you ever see me, though. <laughs> Listen to her. Oh, yeah. I was in that big movie with Leo. You know, that little thing. Hello? <laughs> That's bragging rights, girl. And you know who else is in that movie? Harley Quinn. Okay? I think that's yeah, even more yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, Leo's cool, but Harley Quinn. No, but I assume that we can't. Okay, so so I shouldn't brag about it because we can't see you. Darn. I don't know. Well, I, I, honestly, I've not okay. seen it. But <laughs> um, well, but nobody yeah, nobody's was, called me up and said, oh, my God, I saw you. Um, but I did work with, I spent the entire day with um, with uh, Jonah Hill because I was one of oh, the nice. men. Like one of the machines, cool. so I, I spent the entire day manicuring Jonah Hill, and he's so awesome. He is so incredibly sweet. Like he's really? just a sweetheart. He really is. Yeah. I've never I, I don't, met him, and that's, really and that's awesome. A, he doesn't have a bad reputation, not that I've heard. Um, Leo, you can tell he's the kind of actor. Some people are a little bit put off, but he's the kind of actor who is um, what I call inside himself. He is. Um, some some actors they're completely in their zone uh, until the director says that's a wrap. Right. They are the character from start to finish, from the time that they are in costume, in makeup. You know they're already pre preparing. So he's he's very he's one of those kind of actors. So he's not. I mean you shouldn't do that anyway. If somebody's that status, like just go up to them. But that's why a lot of times they'll say don't go up to an actor. Not because they're mm-hmm. not friendly or going to talk to you, but they're in their moment. They've got their their vibe going. They're they're riding their vibe. So um, I do that too, especially if I have to be emotional. Like I've got to go completely inside my shell and um, make that happen. And if it breaks, it's really hard to get back. So sure. people thought that. No, I happened. understand. Like when I was, I was doing like earlier runs, like I've I've since learned to warn people. Because I used to just um, be off to myself and kind of doing my own thing if I have to be emotional at any point and people were put off by that. They thought it was uh, they thought it was antisocial or what have you. Mm-hmm. So Leo sure. is that no, I got you. that's what I gather. But Jonah Hill is not. He can turn it on and off and and he can go in, right into character and then you know, when the director says cut, he's joking, he's back to joking again, so and That's I admire cool. that. I like I, I like to hear that. 
Well, not all of us can, you know what I'm talking about? You know, and that, and it's refreshing to see that because sometimes I assume, you know, people assume that you watch someone on a film and they're like, oh, I'm sure he looks like he's this or this. So it's, that's refreshing to hear. But here's my right. question relative to the horror, since you are a quote unquote scream queen, end quote. So tell the folks, uh, as it relates to the horror movie thing, obviously when you're on a set, there's a big difference between somebody sitting at home watching Scream versus literally filming Scream. There's a big difference. So I just wanted to ask you, um, do you think the progression, like remember back in the days there was the Exorcist, the Omen, things like that. We've progressed quite a bit, not only technology-wise, but just in the genre itself, I think. And so you being a participant in more of some of the new, the newer horror films, talk to me just a bit about that in terms of how do you think we've progressed? Do you think some of the new horror is more exciting and enticing, or do you think it's becoming more – I see a lot of gore. I see a lot of slash. I see a lot of – do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, do you think we're progressing think in a positive way? Listening. No, I think it's really? worsening, and I'll tell you why. Um, back in, I think, like the 80s, we had Freddy Krueger and all that, and those were good right. because, I mean, not only not only were they new, they were an original idea, but they were psychological. Okay. Sure. And it was, you know, it, it got to your mind, and that's what made it horrific. And in recent years, it's just become torture porn, particularly against women. There right. is, and, and this is, you know, in TV shows as well, there is a lot more violence towards women than there used to be in film and TV. I will not subscribe to HBO. Almost really? every show they almost every show they have has rape towards women. Pretty much every show. Oh, that's horrible. Even if it even the dubious consent that people are now talking about and okay, people right. are now talking about it and that's great, but it doesn't need to be so gratuitous. And there's there's more, um, you know, we can we argue all day on what's gratuitous, but there's a lot right. more nudity. And I say nudity because until women are allowed to be shirtless like men are, it's going to be right. considered nudity and it's going to be sexualized. And sexualized because we're forced to cover up and men aren't. Having said that, men are naked on book covers, and that's perfectly fine. It's empowering for men right. and it's considered for women. Um, we've already talked about that. But right. there's a lot no, more but I agree. towards women. And I think it's a direct okay. result of the more rights women get, the more there's violence towards women in books and TV. Because that's the backlash. Uh, they, they might not be able to hurt us for real, but they can do it on, on film and TV. And you need to ask yourself why. You know, there was one movie, like Captured Hearts, so it's Bleeding Hearts now. I, I still call it Captured Hearts because that's what it was mm -hmm. when I filmed it. Is uh, five sisters who every year kidnap, torture, and kill five or six men from the town. Some men have come up to me, like at the premiere or what have you, and said, you know, it's so refreshing to watch men being tortured than women, because for women it's constant. And men were saying this. And then there's other men who call it blatant man hate. And I'm like, really? Because do you write Eli Roth and tell him that his movies are woman hate? Right. <laughs> Do you, do you write to the producers of Game of Thrones and say, stop raping women on your show? Of course not. I don't not. think you do that. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, so one, one movie where men are tortured, and it's a big deal, but women are tortured all over the place, and we're just and supposed to deal with it otherwise. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm so, glad we're on the same page there. Yeah. So how has it changed? It's become a lot more mm -hmm. violent towards women. That's how it's changed. Gotcha. Okay, so my it's last like question to you. Mm -hmm. I was gonna, it's, it's a lot less psychological and just a lot more blatantly violent. At some point. And that's discerning, too, because I have been thinking that for a while. I just judged. I was just part of a film festival, and I was watching. And some of them were clever and psychological and interesting, and I liked a few of them. And then I said to myself, yeah, it's kind of becoming, once again, the pool of blood and the chick and the naked. And the, it's exactly kind of what you're saying. Now, on the flip side of the fence, my other last question to you is relative to your TV career. As we talked about, obviously, you did One Life to Live. She's been on things such as Southern Fried Homicide, Boston Massacre. Dude, Secret Lives of Stepford Wives. I've seen Stepford Wives. Oh, my God. How did you get involved in that project? Because that's awesome. Uh, I just I went on um, – my agent at the time sent me on this audition, and it was – I just remember – I remember that audition because it was 
like raining on and off, there was the baseball parade going through Manhattan, like okay. uh, for the base for the Yankees. And I needed to get to a building that was literally across the street, but I couldn't get there because the damn parade was going through. And there was a huge crowd and I had to go blocks out of my way and go okay. like, never mind that the distance between two points is a straight line. I couldn't even sneak through because there were, there was a crowd, there were police, there were barricades. So I had to go blocks out of my way, cross the street, go back up all those blocks. I was a sweaty, horrible, pissed off mess. I got there like 10 minutes late. I walked in. I would have been like a half hour early, but I was 10 minutes late. I was sweaty. I was miserable. I put my heels on and I went and I did the read and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. And two hours later, my agent calls me and says, I got the part. And I'm like, what? <laughs> when I try, I don't get callbacks. I could give a shit and they want me. Wait, what? <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, I wow. guess I got a part. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and it was great to work on. It was great to, to do. It was fun doing the project. Oh, I bet it was. That's because that's just a, that was a cool movie. I mean, when they did it, it was awesome. So I was like, "That's neat." Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's you fun. Can, you, so now <laughs> the very last question, which should have been the first question, because you'll notice I very cleverly avoided doing this till the very end because I want you to explain. Oh, no. I'm telling you, there has to be some reason or some methodology behind your parents giving you this name you got. Okay, it's the most unusual, unique name I have ever heard. So I want you to pronounce it because I'm afraid to say it because I'm going to say it wrong. That's one reason it's not been said yet. And then is there any kind of special um, reasoning behind that? Because that name is so different. You know what I mean? Um, it's pronounced Saragon. That's it what means I thought. Bloodstone. Okay. It means bloodstone or blood from the stone. It's from J.R. Tolkien's The Silmarillion. Ah, okay. And it's, it's a red flower that grows on the side of a mountain. A sereg is, a, is the flower. Ah. Sereg on. I love that. Um, sereg on. Okay. <laughs> how can I say this? It is my legal name, and that's all I'm going to say. Okay, that's fine. I just thought there was some kind of, you know what I mean? Because when you hear somebody's name like Aaron, they're like, oh, my God, that's so different. You have to ask. You know why? Because I've never well, heard of it. Name- it's lovely. The name was given, the name was given to me and my parents, well, my dad was, um, was a big sci-fi fantasy nerd. My mom, incidentally, speaking of horror films, my mom loves like zombie movies in addition to soap operas and Danielle Steele novels. I, I don't oh, get that. Oh, really? But it, yeah. Like my mom loves I don't get that. Movies, so I don't get it. I don't get it either, really. My mom was into well, The Walking Dead well before I was. <laughs> but, uh, but my see, dad was, I don't get it either. My dad was, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that. But my, but my dad loves sci-fi and uh, fantasy. So he didn't give me the name Saragon, but I got it because I love sci-fi and fantasy. And I don't know if I would have if he hadn't got me into That's fantasy it. and sci-fi. I think that's really cool. That's absolutely awesome. So thank you for sharing that. This way I won't screw it up because I have a few things I have to say about her. First of all, I want to remind you, now that we've done this wonderful show, give me about two hours or so and the episode becomes archived so anybody can listen to it anytime they want to. From now to the end of time, you'll be immortalized on my show, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to read off a list of places where they can find you. So I'll read everything off. Let me know if I've missed anything. Um, So Saragon can be found first and foremost on IMDb, which is what I mentioned for her movie profile. She can be found on YouTube, Vimeo, Amazon, Goodreads. Her website itself, and I'll spell her name for you, it's S-E-R-E-G-O-N, and her last name is Odassi, so it's O-D-A-S-S-E-Y.com. That's the website, SaragonOdassi.com. She's on Twitter, same name, at Saragon Odassi, and two Facebook pages that I found, which is the personal page, and then, of course, the Saragon Odassi actress model. Obviously, what we talked about today, which is Steampunk, her Kickstarter campaign, I believe, is still up on Kickstarter.com. Any place else that I might have missed? Are you on Instagram? Because I did not find that. Maybe I'm just stupid. I'm on Instagram, but it's not my personal account. It's at Absinthe Alliance. Oh. 
So it's the, okay. it's my busy bee. It's produ- it's my production company. The name it says busy Got bee it. productions LLC. So you can either put in Got busy it. bee productions LLC or you can just put in at Absinthe Ryan. That is absolutely awesome. Wonderful. Okay. So the last part of my show is always done the same way, which is you get to be quiet. I get to tell you what I think of you, which is awesome. And I do this because this part (laughs) of the show is not script. This is unscripted. This is not anything that I read, which means it comes right from the head and right from the heart. These are just my impressions of you based on researching you, stalking you on Facebook and other social medias and the things that I hear from other people. So I put a nice cutesy little 60 or 120 second thing. But first, let me just say, I'm so jealous of you. It's sickening. You've worked with some of the best people in the entire world. You've accomplished so much. She's on book covers. People talk about her like she's a vampire. She models, she writes, she directs, she produces, she does stunts, she does choreography. That makes you a badass woman. It's just that simple. So let me start off by saying, let me say what I think of this Siragato Dassey badass woman. The first thing I noticed about her when I was looking at anything on social media was I'm scared shitless of this person. Not because of the fact that I think she would eat me because she's supposedly a vampire, but because of the fact strong women in strong business in a weak society that relates to women being strong are always a force to be a force, I should say, to be reckoned with. Obviously, it goes without saying. If anybody goes to your IMDb profile, the first thing they're going to see is she gets booked a lot. She's done a lot of work. Or they could go and Google you and say, "Oh, look, she's the model for Playboy." However, what they're not going to see or what they're not going to hear is the fact that I believe you to be an artist in the truest form. You've done every form and every medium that there is in the artistic sense of the word when it comes to film or television. That alone gives you your applause to begin with. Second of all, you do it with such diversity. You're, I've read your posts. You're very real and raw and honest and truthful about the business you work in, the people you work for, and what you want to accomplish. Your projects are out of the ordinary. The things that you cast and you work on are very different. If you look at her, if you really, really look at her picture, look deep into her eyes, what you'll see is, I think, two sides of one coin. I see you as two very different people, one who's very strong, very accomplished, and, and wanting to do 800 projects in the next year, and then a whole other side of the fence that wants to be taken seriously as a person and is guarded for reasons that you share with no one. And I think some of those reasons probably come out in your personal projects. Just a guess. I myself am afraid to meet you, but I would love to. Why? Because just to be in your presence makes me feel empowered. This last hour and a half, it's refreshing to talk to a woman who knows who she is, who understands how to define a woman in today's society, and knows what to do with her power and her privilege. And yes, you are privileged. It's not everyone in this world that can use their talents so well to do so many things, and especially to make women feel important, recognized, and inspired and motivated. That's one of the reasons I wanted you on my show, besides the fact that you are a smart ass, you have strong opinions, and you're you're just nothing short of beautiful. It's that simple. Um, when I hang up the phone, I'm going to give you the last however five bucks I have before I get paid, not because I have to and because you're on my show, but because I just want to, because not enough people take five minutes to give $5 to something that people have spent 5,000 hours on. I hope if I've done my job well enough that people are inspired to want to see your films, to want to support you. Um, my film festival is in New York City in June, so you have an open invitation to either be a panelist or at some point in time you can certainly submit. Um, I, I'm just grateful that you gave me the time that you did. Oh, my gosh. That's what I think of you. I told you. <laughs> that's the best part, I think. And that's what I'm sick, folks. Now, imagine if I had wine, what would come out of my mouth. But it's only a lot, <laughs> and I have to take more cold medicine because I feel like shit, and I have to go on TV. But at least you're done. It's 12.30 in my time zone. It's 12.30 right, in my time zone. But we're not at 5 yet. I have, to, I, have to reckon, I have to wait like three hours and then I can reconcile. You know, it's one of those things. Definitely. And I'll make sure, folks, we'll put up that Kickstarter campaign once again today on the show page as well, uh, as well as my regular page so people that still want to contribute can do so. And, and I meant what I said. You know, you have an open invitation. Come back to the show. Come to the festival, et cetera. Stay in touch. Let me know what's going on. It, it's been wonderful. Thank you. And I'm sorry we took an hour and a half, but oh well. Oh, don't be, don't That's be. I, I can't believe <laughs> Thank you. It's it, easy, it, right? I mean, every, it just goes so fast, right? It goes it really quick. And hopefully I've I wasn't some boring. interviews where I'm like, oh, God, is this over? No, you are not boring. You are amazing. <laughs> and, and, you know, oh, I, I love you. being on your show. I, like I really love thank being you. on your show. And, and thank you um, thank for, for all of the, the, the kind words. I mean, just the truth. Feeling, you feeling empowered is absolutely amazing because there's so many women 
and I don't know how this is going to come across, and I apologize if it's crass, but there's so many sure. women who are threatened by the things that I say and do and threatened by my energy, and I don't know why, um, hmm. because I want you to feel empowered. If you choose to do something, fine, but I'm here to tell you that mm-hmm. just because you're a woman doesn't mean you have to do those things. Right. Uh, you know, if I, want, I want it to be a choice and not a choice in quotes, like illusion of choice. I want you to generally mm-hmm. feel empowered and, and so it's sometimes a lonely road because sometimes people, you know, they don't want to be around strong women. They want to be around right. strong men and, and and submissive women. And we don't have to do that anymore. We don't have to be right. that way. You can be however exactly. you want. Um, exactly. So I want people, men, women and men, to feel empowered to do how you feel is right by yourself. Not hurting anybody else, of course, but but. Do what makes you feel right. If you don't feel that you want to be doing that, whatever whatever you're supposed to be doing, don't do it. Um, I think it was Walt Whitman that said, dismiss what insults your soul. So I like please that. dismiss what insults your soul. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong advice. that quote. I think it's Walt Whitman. Um, I'd have to look that up. Yeah. But I, I think you might be close. But, I, but, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm proud that, that you feel empowered, and I hope that, you know, you pass that on and, and other people hear what, what you've said and, and what we've talked about and, and question things because sometimes people don't question things until it's brought to their intention, their attention. Correct. Um, Correct. That's what indoctrination is. You don't question things and, and you should. You should question everything. Question me too. You know, that's why I'm on the show. You can question me. That's exactly right, and I questioned the hell out of you, and now I knew just about everything there is. And no, apparently I don't have to be afraid of her vampire side because she doesn't have one, at least that she's know. talking about on there. Whew, no, okay. not, not, unless, not, unless I'm, not unless I'm intimate with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you got to go. <laughs> see, I have, see, I have a sense of humor. Contrary to popular belief, see? I do have a sense of humor. See? <laughs> she does. She's humorous, folks. There you go. All right, my lovely. I'm off to uh, try to take care of myself and fight a car. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Take some cold medicine. Get some rest. I'm going to, Mom. I will do that. You have a great afternoon. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye. Tell me that she just wasn't lovely, right? I absolutely love it when people come on my show that are that badass, and I really don't have to be afraid of her anymore. Yee-hee! Two thumbs up for that. Let's go one more time and talk about it one more time. Places to find Sarah Gano Dassey. First off, Twitter and Facebook and Kickstarter. Let's start with the Twitter, at Sarah Gano Dassey. Website is saraganodassey.com. She is on Amazon, Goodreads, YouTube, Vimeo, the Kickstarter.com, which is on my show page and my personal page, her IMDb profile, Instagram, she mentioned, Busy Bee Productions, LLC, and for Facebook, both her personal page and, of course, Sarah Gon Dass- Odassi, actress model. And one more time, I want to remind everybody, Kickstarter campaign on my page as well as the show page, she, she said it flat out. You want to donate a dollar, give a dollar. You want to get five, give five. Just because somebody's there doesn't mean they don't need more help. So please do your best to reach out and be able to help her. As previously mentioned, obviously, folks, I'm going to be off the air tomorrow because Kerwin, one more time, good day, Chicago. Please make it a point to listen in. I'll put it on my show page, all my show pages, in addition to his uh, Sergeant Seizure page and my personal page. I'm off here tomorrow. I'll be off here on Monday. And then Tuesday, we're going to be talking to another indie filmmaker who is making a production called Assassin's Apprentice. So look for me on the 14th at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. 15th, Jennifer with Ignescent Music is going to be coming on the show. I love promoting musicians. Her and her music, a little heavier sound, 4 o'clock Central Standard Time on March 15th. And then the 16th, another indie filmmaker, Noon Central Standard Time, Mars Robodge. The project is called Scumbag, if you can believe that. A little interesting, right? 17th is, well, we all know. Cindy out at the crack of dawn having Irish food and alcohol. Thank you very much. I want to say thanks again to Sarah Gunn, my lovely and beautiful and talented guest. Everybody who is listening in, do I need to say that? Without you, I don't have a show. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for listening in and supporting me and supporting my son. Um, I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Ready? Okay. Pencils, glue. We got crayons, every hue. School supplies for your whole crew. Target's got everything you need to ready, set, go back to school. Ready? Okay. We got paper, yes we do. Light roll notebooks, pencils, glue. We got crayons, every hue. School supplies for your
your whole crew. Target's got everything you need to ready, set, go back to school.